A new study is out in one of the most extraordinary fields of medical research, near-death experiences. It shows that even though the brain shuts down within 30 seconds of the heart stopping, some people who survive have memories of what happened around them, sometimes minutes later. Cameron McIntosh has more on the largest study of its kind. This is my past life. For Lori Brewer, it was all about success and recognition in her career in real estate until she seemingly died. I was not breathing, no heart rate for almost two minutes. Time in a hospital bed she can account for. If the bed was like here, I was away from the bed at the foot of the bed and I was watching. Looking back on herself, she can't explain how, just that it happened. I need to make sense of this and that's why I had to do so much research to understand physiologically what has happened. The so-called near-death experience, a term first coined in the 1970s, subject to plenty of debate and few definitive answers. Now a group of scientists is claiming evidence of consciousness in people whose hearts and brains stopped functioning. Six years ago, British researchers tried to influence near-death experiences by placing pictures in resuscitation rooms to see if patients resuscitated after being clinically dead would recall the images. Turns out most of the data came from outside of those rooms. Out of 140 cardiac arrest survivors, 39% recounted something during the time they were flatlining. To see if there's anything out there beyond death. Unlike the movies, the majority of those experiences are vague. Sounds, lights, only a small few claiming to see tunnels of light or out-of-body experiences. Still, for this woman who also had near-death visions and is reluctant to speak openly for fear of ridicule, there's reassurance in common experience. It makes me feel better, <laughs> knowing I'm not crazy. It's also evidence for a small scientific field trying to rationally explain what so many people insist is real. The key question is whether that's really happening in the brain or it's actually somehow outside of the brain. Cue the science versus spiritualism debate. But those that have been there aren't sure we'll ever know. I don't know if I'm necessarily one of those people that needs some definite explanation. We're asking science to put a label and a definition on something that is almost unexplainable. Cameron McIntosh, CBC News, Winnipeg.